February 2003, there was a huge demonstration in London called the Stop the War campaign. I've never been on such a big demo. Two million people were there, showed up, I and mean, it was it was just vast. The international opposition to the war was huge. The only person who supported it, of course, was Tony Blair. You couldn't say Britain supported it because Britain clearly didn't support it. And there was this kind of air of monomania. These these two obsessives who were going to push through this policy, no matter what. And this was the actual day of the invasion, when Bush himself came on the telly from the Oval Office to speak to the nation. My fellow Americans, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, shock and awe. And that phrase, shock and awe, sticks in the craw. Basically what he means is terror, is bombing people from a great height. You have to be a bit careful about using images of specific people dying. And this, this one was of a, of a young boy who's a victim of shock and awe, if you like, a victim of an explosion. This is a picture that didn't really make it widely into the papers. The top of his head literally blown off. It just made me think, this idiot Blair, letting this rip, letting it happen, not, not objecting to it, and then proceeding to lie about the consequences of his actions. That's what, that's what I find most disgusting about Blair. There he is, standing by his intelligence. Well, that's sort of self-explanatory. His intelligence turned out to be a load of shit. There was this scene of the statue of Baghdad being pulled over, pulled over by a, a US Army uh, crane. There it is, you're free to wipe up after us. The chaos was just beginning. You, you actually do have a documentary function, which is your duty to, to make your point and to try and authenticate your point with pictures of what is actually happening. These are pictures of people being rounded up, literally, by these poor stupid troops who are expected to be welcomed with open arms, according to the propaganda propagated by Bush and Rumsfeld and the like. The cartoon is a sort of low art form, which is generally humorous. Of course, these aspects of it are not humorous at all. They're not remotely funny. They're grisly. Tony Blair's always been opposed to capital punishment, but he's prepared to draw, draw a blind eye over this one. A blind mad eye. Swing against tyranny deplores the way Saddam Hussein was executed. It was completely wrong. <laughs> Hanging is an appalling thing. It's details to remain a private matter. You might say that's unfair. Well, fuck it. You know. There was lots of talk about you know, prosecuting Blair as a war criminal because of this transparency, dishonest act of um, invading Iraq and lying about the intelligence and all the rest of it. But there's no way it was ever going to happen, at least not in this country anyway, that he'd get arrested and jailed. But it was like wishful thinking, really. Now he travels the world making money and being apparently a peace envoy in the, mid in the Middle East, which is one of the most preposterous roles I ever imagined for the man. That's Blair now. That's Blair at this moment in time, as it were. Completely unapologetic, completely shameless. Look, I feel perfectly OK about them because... They did exist, albeit in my imagination, but I think you're missing the essential point here, which is that I am a weapon of mass destruction, and if I think they exist, then they exist. The official occupation, I think, ended at this point. This whole campaign was launched in a welter of jingoism, if you like, of ferocious patriotism. That's what Bush was all about, and this is shoving it back where it came from, back up his throat.